The Slim Fast 14 Day Effect on your New Year's resolution. Day one, the new year. You want to kick it off with a bang, and you're not just talking about fireworks. Day 14, you're ready to start this year right, looking great and preferably on top. Two weeks is all it takes to get what you really want. Swap two meals a day for Slim Fast protein shakes or bars, get in a 30 minute workout, and stick to a 1200 calorie diet to lose up to six pounds in your first 14 days. Find Slim Fast in a store near you. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood After Show. Your wishes are come true. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Sing it. Yeah, you love it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to After Buzz TV Parenthood. We are doing season five, episode 11. Promises for many reasons of this episode. I hope you all had a nice two week break <laughs> that Parenthood did. And I, well, I hope everyone had a nice holiday, Christmas, New Year's, Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Okay. Chrismica. Chrismica. For all you out there. Uh, I, I had a great vacation. I hope you guys did too. We are back here doing Parenthood. I'm your host, Marissa Serafini. And with me, I have... Elena Jordan. And Tiana Hobson. Yay, we're doing Parenthood again. New, new Year. Happy New Year, too. Yeah, Happy 2014. New Year 2014. Yay. First oh, episode. Good. Yeah, first episode. What did you think for the first episode back, especially the New Year? Good kick episode to kick it off. With off. A bang, yeah. yeah, absolutely. They a lot gave us a little on. bit of everyone. With you know, people were pissing me off left and right, but <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get to that later. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Except for Amber Ryan, there was no yeah. Amber Ryan. Not no, like they weren't even there. Especially how they left off last episode. Mm -hmm. Like I was really mad that they didn't pick that up from this episode. But obviously, in the preview, uh, we'll yeah. see more about that. But we'll get into that. But let's just. Start with Zeke and Rocky. Um, well, Zeke, you know, he's still by himself. And Camille's still away on her arts retreat. And then Zeke's by himself in his boxers, having, like, no personal... Th like, like, he can't take him... Take care of himself. Zeke is disgusting. Yeah. Let's just be honest. He's a no man. Need to he, is a, he is curled so milk. Like, oh, yeah. just that was nasty. Nasty. The fact Ooh. that there was trash lining the table and a no. glass of wine that hadn't been fully drank. Like, put it in the dishwasher. Put it in the sink. Put the trash in the trash can. After mm -hmm. you eat something, you put the dish away. I know my mom's probably thinking, like, pot, kettle, black, because I'm a mess, too. <laughs> but seeing it on Zeke, I was like, that's not a good look. No, especially for an an older man, you'd think he'd be be more responsible. An army man. And so yeah, you'd think he'd be more responsible, at least have some semblance of his life and try to take care of him. But it shows that he's like completely worthless, or like there's no self put no point to him without Camille in his life. Yeah, it's kind of sad. It is kind of well, sad. I mean, it makes you feel for him, and it makes you think, oh. I just want him to get on an airplane and go out there and get his woman back because yeah yeah, yeah and Camille's lost. emailing him saying oh I have of some friends of mine invited me to go you know do more painting what mm -hmm. was it that it was like uh, a villa yeah to and to stay another week and I thought from the get go that her retreat retreat was one month in total yeah but she was only there for three weeks but she wanted to extend another week which it would have been already been a month but i thought from originally it just was i think she was saying that it's been three weeks so she still has another week but she wants to add on a week on top of it oh okay so so technically be she'd be there yeah she'll be gone okay total that's a long time that is that a is. long time for for them to, to be, be separated long enough that it's worth it for Zeke to buy a ticket and fly out there. Mm. Did we see that though at the end of the episode? We saw no. we saw Zeke write that email. 
No, he he didn't. But just when Rocky was saying, you know, if my wife was still alive, I would have gotten a ticket and flown out there and yeah. gone with her. I was well, let's that rewind just a little bit. Rocky, so Zeke goes to a diner, and, you know, he just wants to be by himself because he can't, obviously, he can't make <laughs> his own food. So he goes to diner, orders food. He meets this older gentleman, seems around the same age. His name is Rocky, talkative, completely it seemed somewhat <laughs> opposite of what Zeke They're like is. the odd couple. Yeah. It was so cute. He brings kind of out the, the best out of Zeke. Mm-hmm. Which I, I like the two together. What did you think? Oh, just like as a companionship that Zeke needs. He needs a guy friend in his life. Yeah, and I love their friendly rivalry. You know, they had the Navy and the Army thing, and they had the Cowboys mm-hmm. and the 49ers, even though I don't know anything about football. I guess that's a rivalry. Oh, I was um, going to ask you. I was like, that's football, right? <laughs> yeah, that, okay. that is football. I know that much. I know basketball, people. I <laughs> yeah, know basketball. basketball, I'm good. Um, football, not so much. But I thought <laughs> that was cute how they kind of had that mentality, and it really did remind me of the odd couple because, you know, you have Zeke who started off as, like, the angry grump, and I think the guy even calls him a putz. Yeah. At one point. Like, what do you call me? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you have this friendly, outgoing guy who's just trying to, you know, make conversation. And clearly they're both alone. And, you know, they're, that's why they're mm-hmm. at this diner eating every night because they didn't have a wife to cook for them. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Uh, seeing Rocky, I'm like, that is what Z could end up being mm-hmm. in just a couple years. If it really goes down the path that it's seemingly leading to with the separation with Camille, he could be Rocky in a matter of mm-hmm. years. I thought th- I thought that was cool and how they balanced each other off. So had he has a new... one-liners, oh, too. Yeah. This yeah, was a did. funny episode. It was. Yeah, and Zeke has a new friend. Yes. I, I, I like that. That was the, the nicer, kind of funnier side of this episode. Yes, and new, new year and new friends. And with some fast, two weeks is all it takes to get what you really want. In 14 days, the only thing higher than your confidence will be your hemline, ladies. This podcast is brought to you by SlimFast. SlimFast is good. It is. It's delicious. It's tasty. It's and healthy. And they have, like, the, the little chocolate bars now, so you don't have to just have a drink. You can have, like, the, the snacks. Oh, my God. It's... You love chocolate. It's delicious. I do. I do. Try I, it. I love chocolate milk, too. Yeah. SlimFast. Top notch. Top notch everything. Slim Fast, make sure you check it out. I might have to do this 14-day challenge thing because, you know, I ate a lot of sweets over the holidays. I think we all did. Yeah, I'm going to start putting Slim Fast in my After Buzz mugs. I was like, I bought chocolate in the airport on my way back here today. (laughs) But, uh, yes, Slim Fast, awesome, great stuff. Let's get into... Oh, boop. Before we also do that, please go on to iTunes. Thank you, everybody who's listening and still rating and commenting. Love all the comments. Yes. And all the people who are tweeting at us, too. Like, Parenthood's back. I'm so happy it's back. I, I saw on the Twitter feed, like, all these updates. I'm like, I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> Don't tell me, Twitter. But thank you, everyone on iTunes. Just please keep rating, keep commenting, keep telling a friend. That's how we grow here at AfterBuzz, especially for 2014. We're getting uh, new shows here at AfterBuzz, so we're growing and growing. So, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah and Carl. Oh, sorry. So, Carl was... turns out to be quite the humanitarian today. And Dr. Dr. Okay. Dr. Carl. Dr. Carl. Okay, Dr. question. <laughs> Did you ever think Carl was this type of person when we first met him? No. No. I thought maybe he was in advertising or something. I thought he had sort of... I knew he had a sexy job because of the way he dresses and the way his party was, but considering where he lived, I just figured maybe he did something that's like a startup or something, but I never had... entrepreneurial. Yeah, I never had doctor, humanitarian in my thoughts of him. Neither did I, because when we first met him, he was kind of, it seemed self-involved. Mm-hmm. He was really big. He was yeah, a sleazy yeah. guy. Very big on himself and didn't really make me think that he would think of others in that generous way. So I thought it was kind of interesting how they wrote this kind of storyline for him, even though I, so I had a hard time believing it. I kind of, I kind of, I get what you're saying, but once I found out, you know, what his job was, it kind of, the sleaziness kind of made sense to me because if you're a good looking doctor, you can kind of pull that card out to get ladies mm. in your pants all the time. <laughs> and I feel like 
that's kind of you that know Carl is he has that confidence that. because he knows that he's successful and but he doesn't really have to flaunt it. So I don't know. I could see a little bit of it being believable. He just reminded me of like a Grey's Anatomy type of doctor. You know, all of a sudden he became a McSteamy. Yeah, all of a sudden Carl's like McSteamy over here. I'm like, oh, hello. And we all ended up loving McSteamy at the end of Grey's Anatomy. Exactly. But uh, yeah, so I I liked the storyline. I liked how they gave him a more professional kind of Mm -hmm. uh, outlook on him and that we, we can see him in a completely different perspective and how Sarah views him. A little bit too, and even though she set her boundaries, be like, uh, "We can't date, we can't sleep together." Oh, girl wanted it by oh, the end. Oh, yeah, she, <laughs> she did. Was you pulled that Dacta card, any girl's gonna <laughs> want you. <laughs> really? Yeah, but at the dinner party, so I was, I was a little confused when he introduced her to that guy and was like, "Oh, this is my friend." I was telling you about the photographer. Was he trying to set her up with him, or was mm-hmm. that more of just, oh? You know, maybe she can take pictures for your website or something. Yeah, I don't think he was setting them up. I think he was trying to do, like, a business thing. Because then he was Mm -hmm. saying, you know, he said that you were the official photographer for a mayoral Mm -hmm. candidate. Like, he had been talking her up. I think he was trying to show off that he, he, you know. I kind of think that Carl purposely did that to show, like, this is the kind of guy you can end up with. But do you want to be with him or do you want to be with me? Mm-hmm. And he walked away being like, now that you know who I am and all my positions and stuff, do you want this kind of guy or do you want me? Mm, okay. Yeah, I just, it was a weird kind of exchange the way that it happened where I couldn't tell if, you know, because he, she was his plus one. It wasn't a date. Yeah, plus So one. it was a plus one. So, you know, he went off and was talking to girls and stuff. So I was just kind of wondering, is he trying to make her jealous? Is he trying to and set he gets her an up award. with a friend? I think he definitely was trying to, to make her a little jealous. Mm-hmm. Like, then he even so. at the end when... Oh, when she he was slapping says, his butt with the word. Yeah, well, oh. when she says, you know, well, I was your date. And he's like, you weren't my date. You were my plus one. And she's yeah. like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's right. I could see that <laughs> she got a little sad in her soul when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they were cute together. And, like, he gets an award, so the he more sexy. I mean, yeah. Come on. An award-winning doctor. Yeah. And how do you not mention his- that to someone when you ask them to go to you, go with you to this event? <laughs> Yeah. You know, he downplayed the event so much. Like, oh, it's just this work thing that I have to go to. And they told me I have to have a plus one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're good at kind of that banter stuff. And then we find out what it actually is. And you're like, um, maybe your mom should be here with you right now. <laughs> or someone who you, you wouldn't bring someone who you didn't actually like as your plus one to something like that to watch you get an award. But he played it out. He really yeah. downplayed it. Just to have Sarah more surprised. Oh, he wins an award. Oh, he's humanitarian and a doctor. He's learning all. She's learning all these new things about him. Yeah, which is kind of having her really like him more. So that was his smart. It was very smart on his clever part. way of doing it. Yeah, because I mean, all the guys Sarah dates, you know, they have not been very. Most of them, you know, have been a little messed up, and I think that especially her first impression of him is a womanizer, so she kind of thinks that of him, and so he did this to kind of show his other side of, you know, no, actually I am not just a womanizer, I actually save children's lives, mm-hmm. you know, and I build hospitals, and I'm a doctor. I do. Everything. That's my doctor voice when you go like this. <laughs> I love that. Everyone who's listening on iTunes <laughs> should definitely go over to YouTube and check out Tiana's face and expression. <laughs> Priceless. Carl Fletcher, doctor. <laughs> doctor. Sup. Award winning doctor. Award winning Can't doctor. Sup, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was fun to watch. Uh, speaking of womanizer, Drew's quite the womanizer oh, now. Oh my gosh. What the heck? I know. Natalie and Nerd Amy. Nerd boy love Amy's, triangle. I know. So out. Amy comes back last episode, the very last scene. She comes back. We think she's going to stir the trouble, but actually, it's Natalie. Causing some trouble. She's getting jealous. About time. I mean, you know, Drew's been over here, like, trying to make her his girlfriend, his woman. He's trying to put a ring on it, pretty much. And she was Natalie like, just she wants, was like, you know. No, I just want to be fun and flirty. Friends with Bennies. Friends with Bennies. And then all of a sudden, Amy comes in and she's like, 
oh hey drew like all like, over all him, over him in front all of her over him I was rubbing like, on his saying, leg oh like, isn't that what you love about him it's like oh we're dropping l bombs now mm-hmm. oh it's serious all of a sudden Mm-mm. oh yeah and and it was really hard for me to watch because like i the way amy left last season i didn't like her just like as a person and i know mm-hmm. she's a fictional character but i mean non-fictional character but uh the just the way she left i didn't like her and then seeing her with natalie kind of made amy look like the good person and I didn't yeah, like that I don't either. Like either of them. I'm like Drew. Nick's both of these guys. Oh yeah, I still else. have them both as evil people who don't deserve Drew at all. Yeah. Because I think that what they're actually doing now, I kind of feel like Amy is playing into the game. She knows that she's making Natalie jealous. Natalie knows, and so I think that they're both kind of using Drew mm-hmm. um, for this, you know, this girl fight thing where they just want to be the girl on top. So they're kind of doing whatever they can to get to win Drew, and he's ultimately going to be the only one who gets hurt because in the long run, we all know that Amy will up and leave in the middle of the night without a letter or nothing, so just saying, Drew, watch your back. Well, yeah, Natalie and Amy can both hurt Drew in different ways, Mm -hmm. but ultimately I think Drew would end up with Amy more so because he seems like he has more of an emotional connection with him. Obviously they had a baby... And that didn't last. Um, but they had more background, more um, history together. And Amy actually genuinely apologizes for what happened. And Did Drew you think forgives it was... her. But they were both drunk. Just saying, if you're going to apologize mm-hmm. to me about something like that, at least have the balls to do it when you're sober. Yeah, mm-hmm. that needs to be a much bigger conversation <laughs> than... than... Sorry. Then like, oh, yeah, I'm he's sorry. already caressing your hand, and yeah. then you say, oh, I'm so sorry, do you forgive me with the sexy eyes? And he's like, oh, I'm going to forgive <laughs> you so I can get some right now. And that was, that was a really quick forgiving. Yeah. Yeah, like, instantaneous. That I'm was, like, nah, mm-hmm. I'll just like, let me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that's also true. He's a forgiving person, and he's, you know, ultimately he would forgive her whether he was drunk or sober. I just think that if you're going to apologize to me for something that major, be sober. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. So I think, but it seems like Amy's actually going to stick around for a little bit longer. Yeah, like, how is she on Christmas break and just not going back to school? Or that's Because Drew, Drew wasn't on a break from school. He's still in school right now, but she's home visiting. Yeah. But maybe she, like... Maybe it was just a weekend? Maybe it was just, yeah, a weekend or some colleges. I mean, the college I went to had quarters, and after each quarter we had yeah. two weeks off or three oh, okay. weeks off. So maybe it was just that kind of thing. But she, okay. says, but she like, was people only miss class all the time, so I'm just gonna miss yeah. class and stay here. Yeah, and she was only there for a couple days, but long enough to like really stir things up. Yeah, <laughs> love triangle. But I think it's cool that we're seeing some feelings from Natalie because you know this whole season she's like, I just want to sleep with you, and but. Does she really she like was Drew? She spitting fire, Ooh. too. And she was like, "Are you, you're leaving tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, cold. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Calm looks. down, Ooh. girl. I thought they were going to throw down in the bathroom. I thought it was going to get straight, <laughs> yeah. like, Mean Girls, like, the jungle cafeteria fight scene. I Love thought it was going to go like that. Yeah, Tian, we were watching. We were like, it's about to be a what? Girl, girl fight. fight. <laughs> oh, that would have been funny to see. What if we actually see that? Like, somehow it builds up and escalates to a girl fight. I think that'd be interesting. Drew walks into the bathroom, and they're pulling each other's hair uh, and, like, screaming. And he's like, what's exciting. happening? You're both crazy, that'd but let's go to my to room and get it on, all three of us. <laughs> 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 then it, that, that would really be a that would be a- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is in college. I'm just saying. He's, what, 19? <laughs> You should be a writer for Parenthood. Hey, I'm available <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's funny. Send in your, you know, questions and stuff to to T to see what you <laughs> I'm want start on the show. Writing fan fiction for Parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, please do. I would totally Game read of that. Thrones crossover. <laughs> yes, it might. Totally read that. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna get the Khaleesi in here. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Okay, so that should be interesting to watch. Is like love triangle now in the making. Crazy stuff is about to go down. Hopefully, we'll see that in the weeks to come. We'll see how long Amy actually stays. Yeah, and hopefully, Drew doesn't get hurt too hard by either one of these girls. Mm-hmm. 
So, but people who are hurting now, Joel and Julia. Hurts my heart. Goodness. And Ed is just, oh, now he's just oh. bothers me every time I see him on the screen. He's just, he's always there at the, every single moment at the wrong time. And he's like, Ed, just go away. Why are you always coincidentally here? Yeah. And who gets drunk at their kid's school function? I know, Ed. and you're in you're in a respectable position on the green environmental thing. Like, yeah. yeah, like everyone knows you in your position. You think you have some decorum in a high school adult atmosphere. Yeah, but no, nope. Drinking, drinking his little butt off, and goes up to Julia, tries to tell her his feelings, I guess, and then Julia's not having it, and of course Joel sees. It's of course, just... Joel sees. And mm-hmm. that leads to the bigger discussion outside with him. Well, they got into yeah, a little they, shoving match. Yeah. yeah. Joel, you know, the hand on the shoulder, Joel, like, They're lays him violent out. violent this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a, don't mess with the Braver Men. Don't boys. mess with the Braver Men. People get violent. Like, Adam, we've seen Adam punch yeah. someone. We've seen, well, we know Crosby has gotten Ryan. into fights. Ryan gets Ryan. into fights. Uh, you know, Joel's Joel now shoving now. people. Max threw something tonight. That was yeah. kind of violent. So, and we'll get to that too. Yeah. But like, I haven't seen anything really violent from Zeke. But that's just a matter of time. Yeah, <laughs> don't I, mess with the Braverman don't boys. Don't mess with the Braverman boys. But yeah, they so they go outside, and Joel questions Julia if anything has actually gone down with Ed and Julia, and this. Is he actually gives her a moment to be completely honest. The perfect moment. Perfect, perfect out opportunity. to just say that they Flat kissed. Out, if there's anything at all, tell me now. And when Julia talked to Adam earlier in the episode when she went to him to ask him to babysit, mm-hmm. he even said, when my you know assistant kissed me, I told Christina about it right away, and we talked about it because it meant nothing, and we were able to work through it. When -hmm. you don't tell someone something, that kind of means that maybe it did mean a little bit more. And I know she did kind of break down a little bit where her feelings are very confused because she doesn't know if she actually likes Ed or if it's just because she feels neglected from Joel that she's kind of acting out. But either way, the fact that she didn't say anything in that Mm -hmm. moment makes that kiss, like now it's, looks bad when she finally will reveal it to Joel. It's, you know, why did you lie in the first place? That makes you guilty in this now. Yeah, well, why did you hesitate not mm-hmm. to tell me that? And then at the end of that, Joel says that he doesn't even believe Julia. So their relationship has even come to the point where they don't trust and believe each other anymore. So no matter what they say, who knows if it's truth or if it's a lie yeah which for five seasons they've really been the rock they've mm-hmm. been the they've been the happy the married couple, couple. That, yeah and to see you know uh, them on a rocky boat right now is hard to watch it's so hard especially joel's just such a good di- guy and you can tell that mm-hmm. everything he's doing he's doing for his family mm-hmm. he thinks it's the best you know thing for them and he just kind of is in one of those positions now where he doesn't know how to get out of the hole and anything he tries to do, you know, Julia is kind of fighting him on that too. And they just got to get on the same page. They need to go talk to a counselor. Mm -hmm. They do. But and he, and that's they got what Adam advice. Said. Yeah. Yeah. A- Adam said, go speak to a marriage counselor. Which I mean, this, hopefully this the, episode really showed how great the brother-sister relationship oh, and that family that is, too. Oh, I love, I love that. And, too, when Adam's talking to Crosby and is like, look after our baby sister. And you're just like... And Aww, then Crosby did a brother. horrible job with that. <laughs> Crosby inevitably drops the yeah, ball ethically. Two busy. seconds too late. Yeah, he's too busy signing Ed up for his <laughs> other sister's <laughs> photog- or photos Fifteen. of dogs instead of paying attention to what was mm-hmm. happening over there. So it, he was being a good brother, but not to the right sister. Yeah, in that moment. Yeah. That yeah. that was funny though. So uh, I, but you know, it just goes to show like the love between all of them. Like brother, and you're looking out for your brothers, your sisters. Uh, that that's sweet. Yeah, and I think that 
it goes to show something else about the show because the episode was so serious in moments, especially with, you know, the whole Joel and Julia and Ed thing. But then you had Crosby there to kind of lighten the Mm -hmm. mood and, you know, give you the comedic relief that you needed at that moment, you know, before you start, you know, just hating Ed even more. It's like, oh, there's Crosby doing something funny but mean to Ed. And Mm -hmm. it was just a nice balance, this episode of, you know, a little bit of everyone. I did feel a little overwhelmed sometimes because the family is so large now Mm -hmm. that, you know, it was jumping kind of quick to all the stories, but it also did a great job of pacing. So so large to the the point we didn't even see Amber and Ryan tonight. We couldn't even cover them. But we'll see them next episode. So, uh, yes, Hank. Hank and Max. So Max goes down to Hank's studio, and he says, Hey, we have to process, like, four photos of mine. You promised me that we were going to do it. And Hank has to do a reshoot. I know what that's like. It's it's not fun. (laughs) It's never fun. Art school. I know what that's like. Um, Yes, so they have to re... Hank has to do a reshoot. It's taking up the time that should have been Max's. And Max throws a fit and, th- and literally starts throwing things <laughs> Thro- I don't know studio. what he threw, but... Something was, expensive. Yeah, something expensive. Photography, something expensive. But, yeah, so Max has a fit, and then Hank's like, oh, okay, calm down. And then Max even calls him a liar, saying, mm-hmm. you promised me that we were going to do this, and you lied to me because we're not. And he storms out to the point where Hank actually has to chase him. <laughs> Oh, the whole time is it mean that the whole time when he left, I was like, wait, you didn't lock up your store. Yeah. You have a lot of expensive equipment and gear in there. Like, mm-hmm. what if it gets stolen and you follow him all the way home? That's I was like the adult in me was just like, no, production gear. Oh, my God. Cameras are expensive. No, but also being <laughs> the adult, when you're chasing or like, yeah, concerned about a distraught kid, you're going to yeah. that's the first thing that you should really pay attention to is the person who's running away and not your own personal yeah. things. So that I can understand another, why you would just drop everything, yeah. being the true adult mm-hmm. and go chase after a kid. That was another good example of them having a one liner to kind of break yeah. up. Yeah. Because it's a serious situation. Then he's like, man, he's fast. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> all out of breath. <laughs> yeah, that, that was funny. Uh, but and then so he. Hank ends up back at Max's house, and then, you know, we see Christina and Adam saying that they, they've they dealt with all this with Max, and then, but apparently Hank hasn't, and he doesn't know that Max has Asperger's. I think he knows, but I don't think he really understands what it means to have Asperger's yeah. and how you okay. react to that. I think that's why Adam was bringing him the book, to kind of just help him understand that he didn't do anything wrong and that he did handle the situation in the best way he possibly could. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is kind of, you know, the reaction, you know, Max has a hard time letting things go. And, you know, some things seem a lot bigger to him than, you know, it might seem to us. You know, the fact that, oh, can't do it today, have to do it tomorrow. You know, in his mind, it's just this greater thing. Right. It's just that... For all the people that Hank has actually come across with the Bravermans, I just never, I don't remember a moment where they actually straight up told him that Max has Asperger's. If if that did happen, please let me know. Mm-hmm. But, like, so I just, I didn't see that, I didn't think that Hank knew that Max had Asperger's. And, like, I knew he probably had a condition, mm-hmm. but that it was, like, really Asperger's. That someone really told him. But, I uh, yeah, so... Adam gives him a book on Asperger's, and Hank starts reading it and finds all these qualities in himself. And Tiana, you called it <laughs> a, a few episodes that, like, he could be... Yeah, it was, like, earlier this season. I was sitting here, and I was just like, you know what? Hank is like Max. I think it's just a milder version, form, yeah. form of Asperger's. And, you know, he was sitting there reading it, and I wrote down he, he finally figured it out that... You know, and it makes sense because someone his age, they might not have known how to diagnose it, Mm -hmm. you know, when he was a child and just thought, you know, like he'll grow out of it kind of thing. So I think it's it's actually hitting home on a lot of conditions. You know, people find out a lot later in life, you know, they grew up undiagnosed. Yeah. Undiagnosed Mm -hmm. things just, you know, from our parents generation that they just didn't know how to control or what to do in those situations. 
Yeah. Well, and also in our parents' generations, you know, they, they usually dealt with things better than mm-hmm. today's generation. There's like you slap a Band-Aid on it or give it pills and then it'll be better. Yeah, every kid gets a trophy for participation. Yes. Oh. <laughs> We're so old. <laughs> We're so old. But, uh, yeah, so Hank reads the book, finds things about himself, hopefully, and then he realizes, okay, I can really understand Max now. But now that we have a level of understanding, and also it also affects his his job, his love life, especially with mm-hmm. Sarah, and just his person personality in general. Mm-hmm. So, and he goes up to Hank at the end, you know, and <laughs> sorry, he goes up to Max, and Max apologizes, and he recites the whole apology. You can tell that, like, he, he has that ability mm-hmm. to res- like mm-hmm. that eidetic memory. You just say things right off the bat, and you know, Hank forgives him because he understands. He understands Max now. He understands. Mm-hmm. And and I think it was good for Max to kind of have that experience. And, you know, he stayed mad at Hank for a while. But in talking to his parents, you know, he realized how to move forward. So I think that they both kind of grew from it. And you could see the how proud Adam and Christina were when they were kind of peeping in through the through the door the way there mm-hmm. when they were playing their mm-hmm. game of chess. It's like, aw. <laughs> that was a sweet way to end. Yeah, it was yeah, a that very was, sweet that was way. Nice way uh, I love the, the line when Hank goes to Sarah and talking about the Asperger's, like, uh, what, what was it, something about emotional? That That's every man I'd ever dated. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, I can't pick up on emotional cues or something like that. That was She's funny. like, that's every man ever. <laughs> yes. So true. That was Difficulty funny. expressing emotions. Yes. <laughs> I have difficulty Thanks. expressing emotions. I there you go. That's every man I know. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that. That was funny. Uh, it was just like those one-liners mm-hmm. uh, here and there that like really breaks it up. Uh, I think that's nice. It's just such a well-written show. It is. It is. It's, the thing is, it's like it feels so natural. Mm-hmm. Like natural, s- s- free-feeling, you know, free-spoken. Mm-hmm. Like anyone says this. On an everyday basis. Yeah. And it reminds me of the show Brothers and Sisters because, you know, mm-hmm. it was no, another family drama. And it's just stuff that you know families go through. And it's very real in the way. And you can tell that even though they have scripts, you can kind of tell that the dynamic of the show is just they shoot it so raw and natural where people are mm-hmm. actually talking over people where in a normal you know, show, that's a no-no. Like, everyone has their line, their line. But here, it's you freely overlap because that is conversational. That is how we are as humans. And so it just feels better that way. I agree. And I see, like, so much of my own personal family. <laughs> and then, like, Zeke and Camille, I totally see my parents here and there. Yeah. So, not to call out my parents. <laughs> but I, I do see qualities that, you know, when my mom goes away, my dad has no idea what to do. <laughs> so, but, uh, yes, I love this show. And I don't have any news and gossip. Sorry, guys, I was on a plane most of today, <laughs> so I had no time to really now, get your After Buzz news. TV predictions. Yes. Oh, predictions. Oh, I yes, have some. T, <laughs> go ahead. We okay. saw in the previews craziness. Yeah. Now. What do you think is going to happen? So... Kind of going off the previews, but kind of just my own thoughts, because I think I should be a writer now that you say that. Um, (laughs) I think I should be a writer for the show. So Amy and Natalie need to get in a girl fight, and um, Drew needs to grow a pair and drop both Beezies (laughs) at the same time. I was going to say that. I was like... Something's going to happen that Drew's just going to draw the line and be like, no, he I'm cutting ties to. with both he of you. Yeah, to. he needs to, and he needs to have a microphone when he does it so he can just go drop the mic and walk away. <laughs> like, he needs to do Sarah's something kids. hard. Yeah, they kind of do. Um, Zeke do you needs think to, he has enough swag to do that? <laughs> no, but not yet. Yeah, so, I, mean, I think it would be cool when he does. <laughs> he it's a confident swag moment. Yeah, like, yes, Drew has swag. Like um, Zeke needs to fly to go get Camille or else by the yes. time she comes back, it might be too late. Just saying. Um, Ryan and Amber, I think that despite their problems, I feel like they will still get married because we already had um, Sarah cancel her wedding last season. Mm-hmm. So you can't do that two seasons in a row, right? Like, eventually we need a wedding here. <laughs> like mother, like daughter. Yeah, I like think. mother, just like keep daughter. But I mean, don't keep getting people engaged just to cancel the wedding. Like, you get me all excited but for Ryan, a TV wedding. And he's, he re-enlisted. 
like, mm, yeah, yeah but maybe they'll like this. go down to the courthouse and get married. She'll I, go I live know on people the army have done base, that. you know, and be like an army wife. I think she's too good for Ryan. I He's mean, keeping too many secrets. He He's is punching yeah. too many band members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's the drummer? I don't know. I mean, I mean, like, what happened to the whole band? I mean, they've been kind of setting up that drummer. Yeah, scenario. so maybe we'll see him again next week. What if? Be back in studio. Drop Ryan. Get with the drummer. No. That's what, what I think. That's my prediction. Ryan leaves because he's enlisted now. She goes running to the drummer, and then like, and then she really gets pregnant. And when Ryan comes back, she has a baby. But then they have to work out their problems because she actually loves Ryan. But then she had this baby with another guy. Boom. That's Drop the soap mic. opera <laughs> drama there. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So what else did you think, Alana? Um. I don't know. I, well, I think <laughs> I think that Joel and Julia, that's going to be a big thing. I think that they're going to have some serious fallout from... Siri-ish is going down. Yeah. Yeah, from the Ed think, situation. Yeah, I don't think Joel will call for a divorce right now. Just like they have to work on their marriage before. Because yeah. Yeah. right now it's just falling apart, but they haven't really done anything to... To try to save To it. really mend it. I mean, they've been going out on dates and stuff, but that's not enough. They just end up fighting. They need talking. They really need need to discuss it with the professional yeah, yeah. they so. should have a um, while ago they should have when they were having issues with victor Agreed. yeah oh, yeah and yeah, i want to see, see the more. kids tonight. i want to yeah. see more of I mean, what's we saw going them on with victor because he he had he had to get you know held, held back, back and stuff and they kind of left having out. a rough time yeah, yeah. i want to i want to see yeah. how he's doing now I the hope parents he's... split he'll even have a more rough time yeah goodness but we'll see for next episode. Thank you all for joining us again. Where can we find you to talk about next week? You can find so. me on Twitter at Elena Jordan. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. And you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. Thank you all for joining us here again. We will see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.